In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone else. The question is, we have to decide whether or not that difference we're making is positively impacting someone or negatively impacting them. There's lots of rules and procedures that we all must follow in life. But in truth, we have opportunities to say, you know what, this little issue is not going to help this individual to move forward in life. And a matter of fact, it might be damaging to that individual. You see, we have plenty of people who say, talk to the hand, which is sort of like saying, you are not important enough anymore in my life for me to even bother to consider you a human being in which I'm going to have a conversation with. Now, I want you to think about that in representing God's house. When we talk about the house of the Lord and that there are many rooms, there's many types of people in the land. They all have to flock to one another to find the right people in which to share their lives with. If they literally find the wrong people in which to share their lives with, they end up in litigation abuse, difficult situations, prolonged marriages that really should have been over years ago, and frankly, they might have chosen wrong in the first place. They might have lovely looking children, but their souls are not intact because of the brokenness in a home or because they practically didn't find the next partner who will love them into appropriate health. The health of a soul is the most important thing the Lord puts in our hearts. I was in an organization last evening for dinner and basically a movie, if you will. The movie, of course, was a pastor doing his evening shtick for the week. They have a week night outreach program, and it sort of has possibilities and opportunities. But what I noticed in going back a few weeks later is that the same people who were there the previous time I was there were not there again. There was plenty of people who were broken who was in that group. But the brokenness is not the issue, that the leader was not leading them out of brokenness is more my concern. That the pastor literally came in, saw me, and had provided me a kindness long ago, but didn't bother to even come over and say hello to me. That says a great deal about a leader, that a leader thinks that he is no longer responsible for his flock is not true, that a leader must always know who his flock is, why they're literally there is not true, but openly he has to make sure that his men, the people who work underneath him, the underlings, if you will, are performing in a way that honor not only God in heaven, but also his lineage as a pastor. You see, the apples don't always fall far from the tree is something we say about parenting children, but the truth is some apples will fall and roll very far from a tree that is broken or that is full of worms or other sorts of devices that interfere with the healthy state of the fruit. When we talk about climate change in the political realm, we don't always think about the fact that climate change impacts our forestation. It also impacts our oxygen levels because trees produce oxygen for us, plants do as well. Nor do we think about its impact on crops, the food that we literally eat. You see, America literally feeds our nation and several others through the international trade agreements it holds. Much of the issues that are being caused in states around the nation are totally forgetting about the International Human Rights Declaration, where there's over 400 countries, is what I heard, that have participated literally in producing that document. Many of the things that states are trying to regulate are actually a violation of federal law or a violation of this International Declaration of Human Rights, where human beings have the right to determine whether or not they will participate in something or whether or not they will go on in life loveless and hapless. You see, there's other people who take away the rights of people, and in that document it says very clearly that men and women do not have the right to take away someone's right to their own personhood, their own being, their own physicality, their own physical health, and they don't have the right to monstrously mob, stalk, or track what they're doing, where they're going, who they're seeing, or any physician they might choose to utilize. In our land, we have those rules too, but some people are forgetting what that means. It means they don't have the right to give out gossip. It means they don't have the right to be solicited for information when they're in a position of authority over other people. It's sort of difficult because I called a company the other day to try and track down a location of someone who's important, but you can see that people don't think about how they don't have relationships with other people, and yet they shout into room as if they do. In life, we have to make real, authentic, transparent relationships with some man or some woman who will literally understand that in life you have a moment of time to help someone. If you have access to producing jobs for other people, then look through your job bank and decide what job could this individual, based on their skill sets and foundational abilities, do to produce a life for themselves. If you're not in that position, you have a network of social contacts, all who work in industries around the globe or at least in the state. Those people might know of upcoming jobs or might literally know that there's a job that could be opened for someone by a loving, caring executive at a major corporation. When a person is in homelessness, the reality is the simplest way to fix that is to offer them a bed. I mean, let's really think about this. How do you fix homelessness? You give someone a home? 
How do you fix the lack of food? You give someone a meal. You see, it only takes a handful of good people to say, I'll handle this meal. Will you handle that meal? And why don't you handle that meal over there? You see, churches do give a nice meal night. And one church in the community is doing a pretty lovely job when the leader of that group is there. When she's not there, it sort of falls a little bit in parts and in pieces. And it's not the same event. She literally is the heart, blood, and soul of that event. It's still lovely to get a good hearty meal, and it's healthy food with good meats, decent salads, and wonderful desserts that are donated by some of the best places in town. But the truth is that men and women host those events. They don't talk about God at those events. They don't mix and mingle with the people who come. and They literally set themselves apart as volunteers, which isn't quite right. Whereas the leader always mix and mingles and goes to tables and talks to people, figures out what's going on, and does her best to literally say, okay, this person has this particularly specific, unique issue. What can we do to help that one thing? Because of that one woman, I got one night's rest on a sofa in a team room in a church. But as I was sitting in the rain yesterday evening and had to move because a monstrous Mexican basically pushed me out of where I was sitting because he was looking for something illegal that he thought he dropped there and I wanted nothing to do with it. Openly, I'm telling the truth now that in life I said, I'm sorry, I don't deal with these kind of people and I just picked my belongings up and left in the rain. I'd actually been there for a while, I'd been resting, but he just thought by his physical size and his age demographic that he could move an old man out of where he was sitting and he literally just sat down and took over the space. I just didn't have the time or energy to put him in his place or to educate the young man. Yet he was wearing the representation of a major international corporation that he had just gotten off work from. He didn't think in one second what that made that company look like, and that's where we lose our lines of importance. That when we don't think about what it's like for other people, we don't possibly know what they're feeling or what they're doing or what they're going through unless we say, hey, I've got a little money. Let's go to a McDonald's or a fast food place sit down and have a $10 meal together for between two people. It only costs 10 bucks, really, at some places, or maybe 12 But the reality is there are places that a person can go and buy a pizza for that much and still feed several people at a time. In life, we have moments of time to really show people who we are. I have proposed marriage now seven times to an individual who is not getting through to me, I guess, because my technology is being monstrously monitored or interfered with on a regular basis by the corporations with whom I am literally getting this solicited from them free services. If in life we don't have our technology tools useful, if they're not really functioning the way they're promised, is that not false advertising? Does that not impact customer consumer rights laws? And is there someone in Congress or in the President's House who's going to help us to protect our rights for lawful employment? You see, our social media tools and our other aspects of our online personalities help to produce us a job. Sometimes I take risks, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I can usually get an executive of the highest level in a corporation to respond to me based on what I say in humor or intelligence. But getting it to move beyond that is sort of a challenge because they have millions of people who reach out to them. You see, in life, we have moments of time to make a total difference for someone, and when we don't make that difference, we literally don't get ahead in life. When we think we're above it, when we don't think we don't have to put, on, put out social media to get a job, we're not paying attention to the world. The world expects us to have every social media apparatus out there. They expect us to be job hunting literally with those tools. But if our technology doesn't work, if someone monkeys with our computer while we're working, it doesn't make sense to go on in life. It is not true that it violates our human rights the right to produce an income, which is a part of the 30 tenets, if you will, of the International Human Rights Declaration that was signed into effect a long time ago. Most of the issues facing us today are solved in that document. But if we simply looked at what that document said, we would have to abide by it because we are one of the major corporations or companies, if you will, and countries, if you will, that put that United Nations document together. And that's the literal truth. Now in life, we have moments of time to say something important. We have moments of time to tell someone we love them. We have moments of time to say, there is no other person like you in the entire universe, and I want you in my life for the rest of my life, no matter how that position is. If I have to hire you, fine. If I have to fire you, okay. If I have to make love to you because my wife or my husband, okay then. But the reality is we have moments of time to be silly. We have moments of time to be friends. We have moments of time to be social networks. We have moments of time to be professional contacts. There are so many labels that we can put on something, even if it's class clown. We openly can make a connection with someone from the past, the present, or the future. 
That is the land in which we live, the land of America that says we have rights. Rights are what we do, rights are how we feel, and rights is what give us the Lord's help in many situations. Now, later this year, I'm going to be producing a new set of audio files called the House of the Lord. I'm looking for a producer, possibly Apple or some other company, to take on that challenge with me. I'd like to travel in the state of Indiana for the next six months to produce these audio files. I tell stories of people who go along for the journey, but I need a vehicle, I need a place, if you will, a mobile home, if you will, that's a bed on wheels and a place with a desk and station for printing. And if I have that, then I'm content. My clothes and other things can be handled in different ways. I've learned that through homelessness, that so many people use material goods to think they're doing something well, when in truth they might be losing all of their money in those ridiculous items or the mega mansions or the things that still have bills that they have to pay long after they'll be done from work. In life we have moments of time to talk about retirement, but it's never too late to start planning, start figuring out how to jump your light year ahead, if you will, from where you are now to where you need to be. And sometimes the right marriage, sometimes the right partnership, sometimes the right friendships do that for us. When we're off track in those things, we can go so off track in our life that we don't know which end is up. And that's something we want to avoid. Now in life, we have lifetime partners. We have short-term partners, but we also have people who sort of crap all over us thinking they're smarter than us. And they might not be. I've just produced audio files when I thought for three days I couldn't do it. And I figured out how to do it by intertwining two different programs. But it took three days because I wasn't willing to do it. It's not true that it wasn't the right timing literally to produce something. You see, the Lord's timing and our timing is never the same thing, and that's something we can talk about in the upcoming audio files of the House of the Lord. Thanks for listening. This is Blake Henson of Blaze Communications, LLC, saying I appreciate you, and I hope you're having a wonderful day.